welcome aboard welcome aboard flip flops it's the little lagoon 380 super cute that's come all the way from martinique with this beautiful family we are at musket cove today perfect weather we're gonna go sailing in a little bit but for now we'll have a look at this gorgeous boat and get to know everyone hi so we're the flip flop family because in cruising you get known by your boat name and that's not right. by your last name. <laughs> so this is Erin, she's 12. Hi. Hi Erin. Um, Michael is 18. Hello. Super nice to meet you. I'm Nikki and Hey. Super. Awesome. Well, I thank you board. for <laughs> thank you for welcoming me aboard. It's uh, really awesome to meet you and see you arriving on our shores. Um, so you guys are selling your boat because you've just bought a block of land here in Fiji and that's going to be your home. Yeah. Right. You've chosen a good Fiji. place. Yes. Oh, you couldn't have chosen a better place. It's paradise here. And someone will clearly be very happy with flip-flops. Probably another family like you, actually. I hope so. I you know? hope so. Yes. Yeah, it's uh -huh. hard to say goodbye. I'm going to cry. Gone five happy mm. years. Yeah. Yeah, five years. Yeah, and it's wonderful how you set it up as a little home. Everything makes sense. Everything, you know, everyone has what they need and their own little corner and you know and also what you've done with electrics which will go and have a look in before to make sure everyone has the powers in it these days very important especially since you guys are probably homeschooled as well yes yeah. so you yeah. need a lot of power to, for your equipment and stuff so that's yeah. great yeah yeah and so you've arrived from tahiti so one stop no stop from tahiti to fiji obviously so yep. Was it fun? How long did it take you? 14 days because we went to Northern Route to stay with the winds and it was lovely. I it we took had... us 17 days. It no, it was 14. Was it 14? 14. It was 14. Um, 14 days with no dramas. You're so lucky. I, yeah, I couldn't we, even... We've heard about so many people who left at the same time. We had so much drama. But we had three bad days heading north um, out of Tahiti mm -hmm. and then we had Parasailer the whole way wow. until we came to Fiji and then the wind started and we Ah, you arrived with a buggy while you, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it really blew when we got in here, but mm -hmm. it was a good passage and it was easy. It's fantastic. Yeah. We had all the hatches open. I did most of the time yeah. cooking. Yeah. I washing. did. I did three loads of laundry en route. Like that's unheard of. So it was good. Wow. Was you can run passage. the washing machine when you're when you're at sea. Yep. That's so good. So um, and then before that, you came from Martinique. So where? Where were you? When were you in Martinique? Oh, we bought the boat in 2016. 2016. In Martinique, and then mm -hmm. we did the Caribbean for two seasons. Completely. Uh, and then we went. On it. Yeah. The refit, the yes. Refit yeah. in Saint Martin, and mm -hmm. then we went from Antigua to um, Cartagena, oh, yeah. Colombia, and oh, then yes. after that we went to the Sand Blast in Panama, which was amazing, and yeah. through the Panama Canal. It was quite scary. We had this huge, monstrous boat behind us, <laughs> and we were like this tiny little yes. speck. <laughs> and then we went down to Costa Rica and came back up, and the Las Perlas, and then we went straight to Martinique. Okay. I know to. Uh, I'm sorry, to Marquesas. Oh, Marquesas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, we spent two years in French Polynesia oh, right. because we got stuck COVID. with COVID. But mm -hmm. it was a great place to yes. be stuck with COVID and wonderful. Oh, we know. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, but stuck in lockdown. It, like, it wasn't a bad lockdown compared to our compared to family you. and friends. That's who right, were, yes. Mm -hmm. We only had about four months where we weren't allowed off the boat or to swim or anything. But oh, other wow. than that, mm -hmm. it hasn't been too bad at all. And we all got vaccinated too. Yes, that's right. So yeah. that's great. Mm -hmm, great. Uh, yeah, we so we are in Fiji now. Very yeah. lucky. Okay, so that's really good. So we'll have a look through and. Um, Maybe we'll let Hike show us about sure. the, 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 the electrics and electronics as well. Okay. We'll start with that. Right, so Hike, so that's, that's you. You're a mine electrician, so professional. So you, yeah, you, you had a business? In I had a business right? doing uh, marine electrical and marine electronics. Okay. So uh, that was what I was doing before I uh, got on yeah. the boat, mm -hmm. which uh, has been super helpful as far as equipping the boat and mm -hmm. setting the boat up for uh, global cruising. Um, the way we've set this boat up, we really don't think about electricity. We yes. use as much power as we want all day. We cook with an electric induction stove. Mm -hmm. There's four of us using laptops all day. We have a media server. We have three TVs. Yes, and that's used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So uh, we don't worry about power at all. Power yes. really isn't a concern We're up here. Lucky. There's uh, 1.1 kilowatts of solar panels. Yes. And, uh, mm -hmm. 
Those are LG 365 bifocal panels and they each feed a Victron, their own Victron uh, MPPT charge controller. Yes, we'll so, have a look at that, yeah. And uh, I'll show you those on the color control downstairs. And all of that ultimately feeds a Victron lithium battery bank. Yes, lithium. While we're talking about the electrical system, the boat has a super big, way bigger than most boats of this size inverter charger. It has a three kilowatt or 3000 watt mm -hmm. uh, Victron MultiPlus inverter charger. That's also a 120 uh, amp charger. The uh, shore power, we can go anywhere in the world as we've installed an isolation transformer on the boat. It's a Victron as well. And uh, we can plug into 110 volts shore power or 230 volts. Wherever we go, we don't even have to worry about it. We can just plug the boat in mm -hmm. and there's no concern about can our boat or can it or can it not run on the power wow. that's... That's you better a, not tell this with your other pieces that there's going to bore your brain every day, <laughs> day every day. <laughs> that happens a fair bit. So the yeah. uh, the electronic suite on the boat is Raymarine. Mm -hmm. um, this is a Raymarine Axiom 12 Plus. This is the 12 yeah. is plus is the new version. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the bigger processor, the much faster unit. As you can see, I've just installed this system, and that mean meant moving a oh, yes. instrument. So I have a nasty little repair that I need to fix this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Up until this morning, I didn't have any gel coat, and then our friends on the boat next door lent me a gel coat repair kit. Yeah. So this afternoon, <laughs> I can patch that horrible right. hole. Um, <laughs> so on this, in the Raymarine mm -hmm. system, we have the Raymarine Quantum 2, the uh, Doppler radar. Yes. And uh, that's a fantastic unit. Mm -hmm. It is incredible, the definition. I've never actually ever met a radar that I like as much as this one. The definition is just unbelievable, mm. especially if you get the thing into harbor mode. It's, uh, we've come into anchorages in the dark at night where you can spot the individual boats well, yeah, and just okay. weave your way through. At, mm -hmm. uh, and for the weather, well, right now the sky is really clear, but... Yeah, I mean, those, so those dots well. are mm -hmm. our friends in the anchorage. I mean, it's, it's just yeah. a wonderful system. Yeah, yeah. And then you have AIS as well. We have obviously. AIS. And this boat for ocean passages, I hate the idea of uh, hand steering for days or weeks on time that I couldn't think of anything worse. Yeah. So we fitted a second autopilot. So we have two Raymarine autopilot computers on this on the boat mm -hmm. and uh, a hyd hydraulic autopilot ram. Uh, it makes, it's fantastic. We've had this boat s surfing down six meter waves and wow. 40 knots of wind on the autopilot, just watching, not touching anything. Yes, and yes. the autopilot's done a fantastic job. Yes, that's great. Cause then you, know, you can keep yourself safe and yeah, the reef the boat itself. down and not have to worry about it. Speaking mm -hmm. of that, when the weather's bad, we have a second chalk plotter inside, uh, another Axiom, and that's a nine inch. Mm -hmm. And that one's set up that inside we can control the autopilot from inside as okay. well. Okay, yeah. So I think that's that. And then we can go inside and yeah, have a look at some of the other. So uh, here's the Victron BMV 702, the battery monitor that measures all the battery voltages. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's. Uh, that feeds our color control, also a Victron here, and that gives us complete control and uh, the ability to look at the uh, boat's electrical system in real time. We can also go back into the history of the system, like here we can see um, our daily solar that we're getting from these panels. That's one panel, 1.79 kilowatts, that was two days ago. Yesterday, not as productive, 1.21 kilowatts. I think it might've been a bit overcast. And all of this, information on the history of this boat's electrical system and the lithium batteries and all of that is on the Victron cloud. Um, it links up to a uh, modem which feeds uh, all the battery and electrical system uh, over to Victron and yeah it's all tracked so you can go and see uh, mm -hmm. where we are and what we've done and that's uh, that's a great little unit. Um, while we're talking about what's here we have a the water maker we have on the boat mm -hmm. It's a cruise RO system. It's a 111 liters per hour, so a 30 gallon system. It's a huge water maker. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that two, runs off your inverter? Or that? It works off the inverter. It's okay. an AC system. And again, we can run the water maker for two, three hours a day, and we just run it off the solar okay. panels for the most part. Okay. Other things I should point out in the electrical system, we upgraded the alternator regulators to work with the lithium system. So on this alternator, we have a Mark Grasser external regulator. Okay. And uh, on the other side, 
we changed the alternator to a much bigger alternator. There's a 200 amp alternator oh, on yes, that side, yeah. a huge 200 amp alternator that normally mm -hmm. fitted to a school bus. Nice. And that one needed a much bigger regulator. So we changed out the Mark Grasser there and we have a wake speed regulator, which is the top of the range. There's nothing right. better now for, for, for lithium batteries. Okay. 600 yeah. amp hours of lithium. And uh, we got the Iridium Go satellite and uh, I think it's, oh yeah, the uh, ICOM, that was also an upgrade mm -hmm. or that we installed also yeah. about three years ago. That's the M506. And you also has AIS in it. So we have two oh, yes, AIS, AIS systems really. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. a receiver only. Mm -hmm. Fusion um, radio. Just uh, with, uh, with your Iridium, you, really ha you have it mounted, so you've got an external antenna. There is an external antenna outside, yeah. which ha does help, I think, with the data transfer rate. I think so, yeah. So as you have to go out holding it, you need to discuss. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's been good. I mean, Iridium really, they've got the technology, the new satellites mm -hmm. in space. They really could yeah. have a better product. Oh, really? I love but, that product. Well, it works great. It's just, I think the new version of what's in space is, <laughs> right. is far more capable than uh, they let us have. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get so there eventually. Yeah, I think we'll get there soon. <laughs> so keeping us in the dark. <laughs> okay. Um, what else can I tell you? Mm -hmm. There is tape on this because wasps love that outlet. Oh, so wasps. For okay. whatever reason, they don't they don't mind the European outlet, but that North American outlet, the wasps love. <laughs> so, okay. um, what else can I tell you? I think, and yes, we cook with the in, the electric induction. Yes, well, you have that. Yes. That okay. Well, that's very safe as well. Because is it one of those things that if you put your hand on it, it doesn't burn? Is that true? <laughs> that's in the marketing material. <laughs> okay. But it's not super. It's not so. It's hot. It's hot, but, but I don't think you'll burn yourself. Burn yourself. I don't think. Oh, great. And, and it's safer than gas. And obviously. then what we do on passage, rather than having fiddles and all of those things, when we cook, we yes. just put a silicon pad and oh, nothing yes. slides anywhere. True. Yeah. And oh, that's wow. even in super rough weather. We actually have a silicon cover that fits over the whole The whole stove. thing, yeah. We are going to replace the oven. The oven okay. needs to be replaced. All right. So, mm -hmm. depending on what the buyer would like, we're happy absolutely to install a new oven or give them the credit for the cost of it. Okay, all That's right, okay. quite happy to do that. I think the thing I like best is my fridge freezer. Oh yeah, that's amazing, that which thing. Which is yeah. half fridge, half freezer. Uh -huh. And we always have beastly cold beers because you can set it to your temperature. Yeah, like and you that. can swap what's freezer and what's fridge as well, isn't Yes, it? Yeah. yeah. So you can set them both as freezers, which we do on a long passage. We normally uh -huh. cook all our meals for the passage mm -hmm. and then use both as freezers when we go on a long trip. Oh, yeah, yeah. And when we, when it was Michael's birthday, it was the day after Christmas and we normally have a couple of big parties and then it was all <laughs> fridge with just drinks in it. It's so all the kids. <laughs> it's nice, it's very versatile. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, that's really good because you have another fridge here. You see, that's just a standard like yeah. fridge. And that's deep. It goes all the way to the back here. Yes. So, mm -hmm. like it's, it's huge. Yes, and what is the lady? Oh wow, it is very deep. Yeah. Yeah. And then we added a little remote. Oh, a digital camera. Digital, and it never used to hold its temperature, but oh, yeah. it actually works really well. See, it's gone up by a degree by just opening just, it up. Oh, that's interesting but then, to know. Yeah. Yes. But since we've added the, the digital thermostat, it runs better, and we don't have any fridge problems anymore, right, which is okay. great. So we yeah. don't even think about it. It's just. Again, that's something that I haven't really seen on too many boats except CPS. Yeah, so you guys are so well equipped. <laughs> well, you know, if it's going to be a home, you want it to have everything you can possibly have that's and right. all the conveniences. We've so, done that really well. So. Well, when we bought it, we did a lot of upgrades and a that's lot of right. changes, but mm. it's been a work in progress. And yeah. as that's it always right. works, we finally got it to exactly perfect, <laughs> and now we want to sell it. Like, what the hell? <laughs> And you have a nice barbecue outside as well, right? Yes, it's and the barbecue will stay with the boat. It will stay with the boat, okay. And it's a, do you want to open it, Michael? It's a Weber 1000 Q1000. Q1000. Yeah, it's a very popular as a Weber. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, we originally had one of those Mant uh, barbecues. Magma. Magma. And yes. And rusted within three months. Very good. And we bought this one. Yeah, and it's been good for four years. Four years. Wow, it's been fantastic. Yeah, that's super popular. And we don't bring side. it in either. We just mm. cover it and leave it out. To that's right. It's the elements and it just works, which is mm -hmm. great. Yeah, and um, we replaced all the the upholstery. The upholstery. Yeah, that's really nice. Inside, outside, stack pack. 
the helm seat chair used to have uh -huh. a big roll at your back oh yes which i hated so i made it into a flat back um the shade we've got on the sides and there's another shade for the right hand side and we've so got beautiful. shade for the front as well yes so mm -hmm. yeah and originally we had a bit of a thicker weave shape, but you couldn't see through it. Oh, yes. So this mm -hmm. is much nicer because you still get yeah. to enjoy the view. Exactly. Yeah. What else? Um, I'm not done. Okay, so there's four cabins. So the kids on one side and you on the other yes. side? Okay. We need our space. <laughs> and then you have a guest cabin as well. <laughs> yes. And yeah. we don't normally, well, we don't use the guest cabin as often as we'd like, but we move Erin into the guest cabin. Okay. And then give the big room to right. the guests. Yes. So, oh, that's yeah. very nice. So she gets squished <laughs> with the washing machine. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. That's cool thing. But that's a good washing machine, though, and it's very convenient. And it's kind of cool because it's a top loader, but it spins like a front loader. Oh, right. So it's got this drum in it that spins. Oh, I see, I see. So it yeah. gets the clothes nice and dry when it spins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they're practically dry, and you don't need as much time mm -hmm. hanging them up, which is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everything's so organized and tidy. Hmm. And then you have a water maker as well. Um, and uh, Haig was just talking about it, but uh, can you show me where's the unit? Where's uh, the control it's unit? It's downstairs in Michael's room. Yeah. So the control unit's over there. Right. Yes. Very good. And then. The rest of it's under his bed and the through hole is yeah okay underneath my feet very nice and and so, oh wow you've got amazing televisions in every cabin and it's just well except well, for the spare room yeah yeah <laughs> three it's three out of four yeah well, well you know if you're living in a small space uh-huh and we've actually got a server upstairs which streams tv to all of the tvs oh so okay you can, there's you can watch the same thing. Plex and you can just go through it like netflix or, oh wow okay so everybody can watch different things at the same at oh different, different things thing. Dif so okay. you choose what you want wow as opposed to being stuck with this is what we're watching today but yes yeah, so the amazing thing is you having unlimited supply of power that you can have all those nice things yeah <laughs> we, don't, we don't often worry about power and if we do we just turn on the engine with the big alternator of and course. it just goes <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and there's Aaron's room mm -hmm. yeah it's well set up very comfortable massive storage yeah and then over here through here is where you release the holding oh tank. yes yes oh you've replaced all the um, all the plumbing i guess it's yes. actually quite new we put all new in through hole fittings as well yeah yes. so as is the nylon through hole fittings so all plastic okay yes yes yeah nylon yeah yeah it's, that's great that, it's the watermaker one plastic the watermaker one is the only one that's not so we, that okay was, it was brand new when we bought the boat we asked them to put a through hole fitting in Yes. They, because they just put it in, we didn't change it. Of course, yeah, yeah, we yeah. changed all yeah. the through holes. So it's five years old, the, that through hole fitting, mm -hmm. and if some, if the new owner wants to change it to plastic when they haul, you yeah. just lift the boat and it's, so it's half it's, an hour job. As long as it doesn't have any, and you can tell when they have issues anyway, yeah, they start going cheesy. green. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, mm -hmm. um, the rigging. Is that was that part of the refit or the rigging we changed by FKG in Martinique? In Martinique. Uh, no, sorry, in uh, Saint Martin. So FKG, one of the uh, premier riggers in the Caribbean. Yes, yes. So they did the entire rig, and they changed the gooseneck. Oh yes, that's a good so idea. So it's a new gooseneck. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was in twenty middle middle of twenty seventeen. They did 18. that. Okay, so no seventeen. Mm -hmm. Eighteen, maybe it was eight. yeah eighteen. Check. <laughs> it was eighteen. Check the logbook. So the refit, when you bought the boat, did you use the refit all in one go, or did you use in we, several parts? We did it in probably three stages. We did a big one about three months after getting the boat in St. Mm -hmm. Martin. That's when we put the lithium batteries and upgraded the whole electrical system. Yeah. Um, something else that I should tell you about the electrical system, one of the weak points in the Lagoon electrical system is, well, there's two, that the wires are not labeled well. It's a big secret how the wiring is oh, done. right. Um, so all lagoons have a history of having corrosion on the main electrical bus. So we removed that okay. to get rid of future problems and we rewired it with 
Blue Sea um, buses with each okay. system on its own separate bus rather than this big telecom yes. bus. Mm -hmm. So that was all done and we spent the time and we traced every single wire for this boat and labeled every single wire. So if you buy this boat, oh, yes. every single videos. wire has a label on it in multiple places so that the new yeah. owner doesn't have to play the what is this wire game. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's very good to know. Yeah, Because we have true. done the, the, the days and weeks of work trying to chase wires. Yeah. On yeah. that. Okay. So yeah, so you've done obviously the electronics. Actually, I lie. There is one wire that we have never found what it is and what it does, <laughs> and that is this switch. If there's another 380 owner in the world who can tell us what that switch does, oh. we're 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 in. We're, we'd love to know. <laughs> really? And and so is, is there a wire behind that switch that you don't know where it's going? We don't know where it goes. Oh. But everything works, <laughs> and there is, uh, we don't know what that switch does. And Some we thought maybe lights, there might have been a nav courtesy light oh, or something yes. else. Um, hmm. Anyhow, we don't know where that switch goes. But <laughs> <laughs> Mystery switch. Mystery switch. Our rigging was done in March 2018. March, March 2018. 2018, okay. 22nd of March. 22nd, okay. And, uh, and what about the sales? We'll have a look at them later when we go sailing. Sure. The okay. sales, we were told when we bought the boat that the sales were six months old. And our survey at the time confirmed that the sales were about six okay. months old. So they're in good shape still? They are in good shape. I think we, we had no intention. We planned on circumnavigating. Okay. And we have had no thoughts of changing the sales. Yeah, so they're good. They're no problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. We'll have a look when we go sailing. And then sure. the motors, did you have anything to do to the motors? Is they already really good? Okay, yeah, so the motors, um, before we bought the boat, just before we bought it, the port motor had mm -hmm. an, a top overhaul. So they opened up right. the top of the engine and yeah. I don't know what they did, but they did a top overhaul in that engine mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Um, that engine, both that engine had about 5,000 odd hours when we bought it. We put about a thousand hours on each okay. engine since we've had it. We normally only run one engine at a time, right? Because why run two? It's twice exactly. the fuel burn for no extra yeah. speed, and yeah, most yeah. catamaran owners would do that. Yeah. Um, so that the engine time is a little high. It's seven seven thousand five hundred hours and six thousand five hundred. But that one had the shape. top overhaul. They're in yes, fantastic yes. shape. Mm -hmm. They run perfectly. As I said, we planned on circumnavigating and mm -hmm. putting new engines in is not one of the thoughts we had. No. And they should easily last to 10 or 12 Yes, if they run well, then maintain well, they last for a very, very long time. Yes. Just replace as you need, whatever attachments, so, you know, Volvo, or... They're Volvo D130s and they're of the generation right. before the electronic controls. Yeah. The, the one year later, they had electronic controls, which gave troubles. These yeah. are still the original ones that don't yes. need fancy tooling to service. Oh, exactly, it's a non electronic control that they want all the cruises like. Yeah, so, so it makes sense. I have done uh, oil changes, fuel filter changes, everything. Try to be better than the Volvo schedule at about every 150, 175. Yeah. Um, impellers every mm -hmm. 350, 400, where they say 500. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention, we fitted a fuel transfer and polishing system to the boat. Oh, wow, okay. So yeah. we put a Rayco 500 ml on both sides. Okay, that's so, normally something you never see on sailing boats. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, we, so that has a pre-filter for both sides, has one of yes. those. Mm -hmm. So we have the ability to open a valve and turn on a pump. On each side has a pump and we can move fuel from side to side. Mm -hmm. Or if you just want to polish fuel, you can open it and just run it through the whole system, keep the fuel, fuel nice and clean. Like right. if you haven't been motoring for a long time or if you've picked up dirty fuel, you can just run it through the system, okay. change the filter. Okay. So that's, that works really well. And when we first bought the boat, we had a fuel issue. The fuel in the port engine was contaminated. Oh, yes. It was full of diesel bug. It was a week long mm -hmm. job to take out the tank yes. and scrub it. It was a horrible, horrible job. I never wish to repeat. So we yes. put the fuel polishing system mm -hmm. in. And since then, we have picked up fuel in some yeah. nasty places from mm -hmm. corner gas stations in jerry cans, <laughs> and we've never had an issue. Yes. We've had fuel on the decks for months in remote parts of the world. Yes, yes. And we've never had a fuel issue. Well, I see on marina boats that are not used a lot, fuel issues are recurrent, but yeah. for cruises, hardly ever. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Okay. When we were in St. Martin, we noticed a lot of the boats that could have survived the hurricane didn't. Right. Hurricane Irma, because the backing plates on the cleats tore out of the deck. 
Oh. And he, that was on Leopards, Lagoons, Fontaine, Peugeot, you name it. Yes, okay. The backing plates came straight out. Most manufacturers put a little washer under each boat and it just pulls straight out the deck. Of course. To be honest, I've seen that on the Lagoon. That yeah. didn't have enough resin in the glass around the backing plate. Exactly. So yeah. what we did here is we got eight millimeter stainless steel and there's eight millimeter stainless steel that runs about that long and about yeah. that wide. Right. Okay. Under each backing plate, there's no ways that backing plate will come out. Okay. Of the that cleat will come out. Of the right. Deck. The cleat will fail before the backing plate. And then Nikki's just showing me, I forgot, because as a world cruising boat. I noticed that, I was wondering what that was. <laughs> <laughs> so that is so we can attach a, a drug, drug or Ooh, warps to okay. the boat. So right, to slow it down. And that again has a yes. massive backing plate that okay. runs from here yeah. all the way in. And that goes right yes. up to the bulkhead and okay. it's tightened in there. Right. So we got shackles and a bridle that's about 50 meters behind the boat. Right, okay. That then you can run a drogue out from. Down. Yeah, yeah. And that'll come with the boat. Okay. Although um, we don't have a drogue. We don't have the drogue, but we have the line that if you want to pull fenders yeah, or an ankle or something. Yeah, you can't just put anything out there, even yeah. just like back So, um, <laughs> exactly. Touch wood, we haven't used it. But them. yeah, so that's that's there because I didn't okay. like where the cleat sat. It yes, it's, it's actually in the way. If it's you're dragging way. something, it's in the way of the Yeah, extension. it's in the way, so. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got a phenomenal diving system, to be honest. I think they could be improved. Really? They're so... But they yeah, are super they beefy really and special. strong. They're good to 100 kilograms a side. We have the super light OC tender, we're super happy with it. Yes, yes. So that's not included in the sale, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah. up for a negotiation, if somebody wants the OC tender and all the parasailer, we'll keep those out of the sale. The parasailer keep, and OC tender, okay. Yeah. To keep the price down. Yeah. But if somebody wants them, we can just uh, talk about what that what that is. Okay, yeah. And uh, really, mm. I don't want to force somebody to take a really expensive dinghy and an expensive sail they might not want. That's right, we can get this. this we like love the parasailer, thing. many people don't, so. We love it. We really do yes. love it. We it sail. We leave it up day and night and we yeah. just go forever. And it, mm -hmm. the boat feels so different when the parasailer is up. It just yes. feels like it's on rails. It it's does, gorgeous. and it's helping, especially with catamaran, it helps relieve the pressure from going down. It pulls about yeah. a little yeah. bit, so it rides gorgeous. better. It's great, yeah. and on this short little 38 foot boat, it makes it think it's so much longer. <laughs> that suddenly the boat just feels so happy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this right. is this is a modification suggested by a rigger friend of ours in Panama. Oh, that's nice, Danix. It's yeah, yeah, it's all Dyneema, mm -hmm. and the, there's two systems here. First of all, this is just our third reef. Mm -hmm. Um, the third reef is the only manual reef you have to clip in, the others are not. Okay. Rather than welding a boot on for lots of downwind sailing, our friend suggested that we make a Dyneema boot. It's this uh, the weaving of Dyneema around. And it relieves the pressure on what did you on say? The, on the foot of the, uh, the mast. The mast. Yeah, yeah, just the mast. Just. Okay, I see. We were told that uh, that would help for hmm. thousands of miles of planned downward sailing. Anchor locker. Um, well, in here, two oh, substantial uh, anchor winch as well. It is. So, I think on the later model 380s, they went to a smaller winch. Yes, unfortunately. Is it so, this is that? a 1500 watt Lafrance mm -hmm. Tigris. Yeah. Um, and your chain is, is bigger than the normal size as yeah, well. Yeah, it's 10 millimeter chain, which is really oversized for a boat of this, yes, yes. this size. Um, the Did chain I... is 2016. Okay. It needs to re regalvanize. Um, it'll last another two years probably. But if the boat goes to New Zealand or Australia, I would regalvanize the chain. Right. Also got a really big Rockner. So there's a Rockner, yes. yeah, oversized Rockner 33. The mm -hmm. recommended sail, uh, Anchor for this boat, say Rockner 20, I believe. Yeah, it's your, it's a your piece of pine when you go have a exactly. good night's sleep. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then there is a spare um, 
delta anchor in here yeah. as well. Okay. And that's then we a standard room. Tuamotu's Pearl Boy to float the chain and the Burmese. Yes, I know. It's a very, very good idea. <laughs> so we idea. have a whole bunch of those that'll go you with the boat. You should show people how to do that in Fiji because still people tend to damage the reef. When yeah, try to save the yeah, reef. We Definitely. Always, we always try boy the try chain. And boy the chain. And it's so much easier to get out because exactly. then you don't have to go and dive and <gasps> untangle yeah. your chain. I think chain. You should, we should uh, host a little class. We can show people how to do that on I'll their own boat because a lot of people are asking, how do you do that? How do you do that? Yeah. Someone will show you. <laughs> now you guys have arrived. There you go. There's a jump <laughs> for oh, it's us. the bridles new. Tahiti, you replaced no, the bridles. No, in Ahe. So in January. Uh, so we put the... Well, you can show what you did, Nick. Also, way oversized. Yes, I can see. Yeah, and I also put... Um, there was a little bit of a check point over here. I replaced it when we bought the boat. And four and a half years later, it started chafing over here. So I oh, put yeah, I one of those metal... Thimbles. Thimbles yeah, in. Thimble. Yeah, yeah. To protect it from chafe. Well and it done. Seems to be working quite well. Great. The other thing we so changed. It's still very sound out here. I can see that. Yeah, in beam. four years, um, one of the braids had chafed through. So I the replaced. Braids on the braid. Oh, the, yeah, because it's a triple braid yes, line. Yes, yes, yes. So mm -hmm. one of the lines had chafed through uh -huh. after four years. So I just replaced it. So All, the nav lights. <laughs> All the nav lights. All the nav lights were changed yes. to new, well, new, new nav lights. Yeah, and they're all LED. And yeah. new anchor. Wearing that. Uh, no, that's original, but it's got an LED bulb. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. And all the bulbs inside were changed for LED as well. And mm -hmm. we put the red light system in. Yeah. The salon. And the shade on the Genoa was replaced in February. Oh, the UV strip. Yeah, yeah, the UV strip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was brand new. Did you do that as well? I did. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> you're amazing. <laughs> I learned the hard way. The first cushion I recovered, I unpicked nine times and then I got the swing of things. Oh, you're so a perfectionist. I did the, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. the shade, the stack back. Okay, the, the yeah, back. that's really well done. And Big jobs too. Yeah, and we've got front shade too. <laughs> the top above the radar, that's yes. an Echo Max. 20, I think it is, radar reflector. Yeah, that's what that's I saw. That's the Rolls yeah. Royce of radar reflectors. Uh -huh. um, it's not like the silly little cylinders. Yes. That one you'll actually get picked up on radar. Uh huh. So I think uh, if you look at, you can generally see boats that have been in the Ark or the World Ark because that used to be a requirement to put one of those reflectors on. Right. So, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. Great. Okay, well, I think that's it. That's it. So, should we go sailing? Let's go sailing. I'm going to okay. take a ride right now. Awesome.